so I don't intend to make this one too long because the previous video on this subject was pretty comprehensive. Um, I've just watched a documentary on ITV um, about ultimate white collar boxing. I actually saw this mentioned in the Daily Mirror earlier um, in yesterday's edition of the Daily Mirror. So I thought it, it caught my attention because I'd done it, done this myself. Oh, well, it'll be interesting to see what sort of perspective this takes. Um, it's six years since I'd done it, 2014. I was 29 at the time, um, 34 now. Um, they had 2014, so uh, hence the age. Um, and the documentary was certainly interesting. It was it, it's strange because I watched so many documentaries about interesting lives and things people do and this is one that i've done i've been there you know i'm one of the guys in the in the documentary basically um so in this in this program they had a guy kind of undercover participating in the uwcb event um and he'd had previous experience of mixed martial arts and it's the very first part of the program i should say but um, basically, the idea was to sort of um, explore what this is all about and to examine the critique of UWCB whilst also um, to give it fair portrayal. UWCB complained that the program made them look bad and wasn't fair in its portrayal regarding their safety standards and so on. But they did, you know, they, they, regularly quoted UWCB, so it's not like they weren't letting them have a say. Um, I have to be honest, a lot of the things that were raised, I can't argue with. It was as it was with me. On the other hand, some of the critique I feel is um, not misplaced, but not standard, if I could put it that way. So, for example, he featured a young guy, uh, Adam Smith, who had been a participant and had been left with permanent um, injuries, some brain damage, and um, him and his family were pretty critical of the way UWCB handled that. For example, after his bout, um, he had the paramedic treatment because they had paramedics on hand, but there was no sort of aftercare after that. Now, all I can say is uh, it's not for me to question the guy and his experience. You know, I have no reason to doubt his experience. It's plain to see. Clearly, he has permanent injuries resulting from this. Um, and I don't think anyone should double guess that. But all I can say is on, on the night in question, which I took part in October 2014, was one guy that was um, bleeding and they ensured he went to hospital so it wasn't as blasé as what this guy suggests that the paramedics just give him par some paracetamol and asked him to go home um, I know that on the nights that I took part when one guy was bleeding as a precaution they actually sent him to hospital um, I myself wasn't badly injured I lost the fight because my opponent was fast and I wasn't properly defending myself. There's a lot of things to look at with this. Basically, I should say, if you don't know, UWCB is a form of amateur boxing, but it's not standard amateur boxing. It's amateur in the sense that none of the people taking part, male and female, are professional boxers. They're basically regular people who want to try it out. Now, the rules are that you're not meant to be a professional for precisely that reason, because clearly it would be dangerous to match a professional boxer with someone who's never done it before. One of the critiques in this program was that because UWCB is not regulated by England Boxing, which is a governing body for amateur boxing in the UK, well, in England, um, then it's a little bit cavalier in its approach. Uh, I don't think that's entirely fair. I mean, what I found was the training period is intense. It's relatively brief. It's only eight weeks. Um, and there are guys and women getting into that that have never, ever 
had a pair of boxing gloves on in their life. Now, with me, whilst I lost a fight, I felt like I wasn't totally, totally in the deep end because I had been in the boxing gym before. I'd never fought before. I'd never been in a proper fight, but I had sparred before um, for almost a year in an actual boxing gym. And the truth is I went to UWCB because I got a bit tired of waiting around. I felt that my age was holding me back in the regular gym. I was in my late 20s at the time. And I felt that in that strain of boxing, for someone who's in their late 20s, which in boxing terms is quite old, I, I just felt like, well, when is something going to happen? When is, you know, when is it going to be set up that I can have an amateur bout? And I just basically got impatient. Um, so I went to UWCB. It was intense. I don't at all regret taking part. Of course, I regret losing. That wasn't the plan. Um, you know, to this day, uh, I wish I hadn't lost. But I know I would have much deeper regret if I hadn't taken part at all. Um, there was another aspect which they covered, which was the fact that um, there is fundraising for Cancer Research UK. So there's that charity aspect. Cancer Research UK apparently has got some criticism for its association with a boxing event. Um, but as they rightly point out, people raise money for charity in all sorts of ways. And there are other people who take risks. For example, let's say you take part in the Gloucester cheese rolling competition for charity. You know, that has safety risks. Uh, mountaineering has safety risks. There is a lot of things that people do for charity that carry safety risks. And the the safety measures I found in UWCB to present the organisers as being completely blasé about safety, I think is very unfair. I would say there are some things that are problematic. I'm not going to lie about that. So, for example, it showed the sparring and it showed the, some professional boxing pundits. I think one guy was a safety analyst. The other guy, uh, I think, was a professional referee. What they noticed was there was too many people in a relatively small space, which meant that the chances of injuries were higher in the sparring. Now, I got a black eye during my sparring. My opponent, my sparring opponent, immediately apologised. I did find that space was a big issue there. You were actually bumping into people behind you. So that's probably a fair critique. critique. There is just too many people in a small space. It also means that the organisers, you might have maybe at most four organisers monitoring up to 30 people. It's perhaps not that practical because they may have the best intentions in the world. They may, may be trying to be as professional as possible. But they can't be everywhere at once. Another thing about sparring in general, and I don't think this is just the case with UWCB, I think this is the case with boxing across the board. I do not believe that sparring is sufficiently regulated. You know, with boxing, people assume that injuries occur in the fight itself. I would argue that probably a lot of the time you hear about guys getting brain damage, a lot of that may be incurred by excessive sparring. The idea of sparring is you're meant to kind of lay off only use 20% of your full strength. The reality is people let it go. And that's not necessarily deliberate, but it, it happens because sparring isn't sufficiently monitored. And I think that might be fair critique of UWCB. And I don't think it's because they're being callous. I think it's just because there's too many people taking part. I mean, I remember in our event, there was a guy that he gave a wicked body shot uh, I'm not saying the guy was being spiteful, but I don't think he knew his own strength. You know, he hit the guy. It really was pretty hard. Now, maybe they should have said, you know, this is sparring. You need to be aware. Just hold back. Um, another controversial practice, which I wasn't aware of, is when people pull out of UWCB, they will actually bring in journeymen, which if you don't know boxing vernacular, is basically semi-professional fighters 
who tend to not be very good in terms of they don't get really impressive fight records, but they're basically paid to fight at the last minute. I mean, these guys will be usually sparring partners for the really big names. Um, and they they're, they basically get money to fight. Um, some of them are quite good. The point is they are semi-professional. Um, because any boxer that gets paid is semi-professional by definition. So I wasn't aware of that. And it's that's certainly somewhat contentious. UWCB say they do that in order to um, ensure safety. I guess the logic is it's better to have a semi-professional who will hold back rather than someone who's an amateur and will just, well, they won't hold back. There's some truth in that because when people are training over an intensive period of time and when they think it's going to be the only chance in their life that they do it, they tend to be a lot more dynamic. They tend to give their all, whereas professionals will sort of, you know, take the pace more often. So in a way, with UWCB, there is more recklessness from fighters. Um, and what what this guy who was undercover pointed out was that there are guys in there that really clearly had never boxed in their life and shouldn't have been in there. Um, they were quite critical of the referee. Now, I have to say the referee in our event was very professional. You know, I have absolutely no criticism of him whatsoever. I mean, he stopped my bout and I can't complain because I wasn't defending myself. Obviously, I didn't like losing. I wasn't happy about it, but I wasn't I wasn't complaining about the result because I knew why I'd lost. From a referee's point of view, he had to judge this guy defending himself and I wasn't. Um, part of the issue there was the headgear they give you actually makes it hard to hear. So ironically, the headgear is intended for protection. I actually think it may be better without it because people who are doing this sort of event, like I say, they get reckless because they, they think that the headgear protects them. It's got actually minimal protection. I think without it, they might be a little bit more cautious. Maybe. But the point is, it's more of a distraction than the protection. There's no evidence that it particularly protects. Um, and it may actually make people be a bit more reckless. So that's something I know that England boxing is considered getting rid of in amateur bouts. But I'll, I'll just sum this up. Um, apparently there's more programs incidentally, so I may watch more of those. I won't say the critique's totally unjustified or unfair. I would also support UWCB because in my own experience, I believe with the exception of that space issue, I believe that I felt that I was in professional hands. I do not believe, I mean, I think UWCB has this kind of reputation, the way people talk about it, particularly those who might be from, for example, the British Boxing Board of Control. And, you know, I respect their judgment. They've, they are the professional um, governing body. I respect that. But this perception that UWCB is kind of this Wild West style fighting, you know, like people go into these sawdust sort of underground places and it's like bare knuckle brutality or something it's nothing like that you use gloves there are paramedics on hand you get extensive training there was another thing that was raised incidentally about matching people up with opponents of similar age weight and skill in my case i would say that pretty much happened on the night my opponent and i were roughly the same weight um, we were both junior welterweights um, to use professional boxing vernacular. Um, he obviously beat me, so he was obviously better than me on the night, but I wouldn't say he was a great, great fighter or something. He was better than me, he won. But I wouldn't, I didn't feel like totally overwhelmed, like it was in there with some, you know, beast. I felt, yeah, the guy's good, he's faster than me, clearly he's winning this fight, but I didn't feel... I didn't feel intimidated, if I can 
put it that way. I felt a bit overwhelmed because I, uh, he was faster than I expected. It never hurt me. And so in my case, I don't feel that we were mismatched. And I, looking at the video, I, I made some obvious mistakes. I can see that now. Uh, I had my hand down. The guy could see it coming. I had the basic uh, posture right. Looking at some other footage, and they showed this in the UWTP videos, there's guys in there that, you know, they're all over the place. And I had that advantage of having had some experience in gyms before. I never fought before, so I didn't lie. Um, I didn't have experience in that sense, but I'd had experience in so far as I understood the basic posture, you know, understood the basic kind of protect yourself at all times, that sort of mantra. And I did protect myself sufficiently. I must have, because I know the guy didn't seriously injure me. You know, he didn't get any hard shots on me at all. So whatever happened that night, he didn't seriously hurt me. He won because I wasn't sufficiently protecting myself. And he was pretty fast, but he didn't seriously hurt me. And, uh, I mean, I've only got footage of round one, but... I got the basic posture right. I was defending myself. I missed a few shots. I know why I won, but... You know, so for anyone who watched this documentary, I would say, as someone who's done this, it's not dishonest. That is a fair portrayal, but it's not the whole portrayal. That's what I would say. Um, and it wasn't just me that was fairly matched. I can honestly say on the night of my event, everyone was fairly matched. You know, they, we even had four women taking part and they were even matched for, there was only four of them, but they made sure their opponents were roughly the same weights. Um, and they, they, had, they even had a chart showing what our weights were. So I felt they were very transparent. My only critique would be um, that the space issue with sparring was a bit tight. That wasn't particularly practical. And I don't feel it was being entirely monitored. Um, there were paramedics on the night not doctors certainly I mean this guy Adam Smith I, I would never like double guess someone's experience and it is very sad what happened to him his father was very critical of UWTB he said he wanted to know what's their vetting process for people's experience and the truth is they don't really vet that extensively they'll basically ask you have you had previous experience be honest with us they don't really vet in a military style, you know, in a very, very precise way. Um, I think it's always going to be controversial. But so is all boxing. All boxing has risks. And no one can enter UWTB and say that they weren't warned. And I, I don't want to sound callous here, but, you know, it is boxing. So... If people are entering it, they need to know that there are risks. Boxing is a dangerous sport. And no matter what regulations there are, it always will be a dangerous sport. That's just the way it is. It's, a, it's martial arts. And I think the danger aspect is what, why people do that. Now, I'm not for a second downplaying or trivialising the injuries that people get. And I can understand why people are critical of it. But they also need to appreciate that not everyone has the time or the training to devote their life to this sport. And there is an argument to be made that UWCB offers people an opportunity that is a once-in-a-lifetime experience, and in my opinion, a very valuable one. You test yourself in a risky situation against an opponent in front of hundreds of people. It's a unique experience. And I would be a rank hypocrite if I was to say it's all terrible, you know. Um, so I have huge sympathy for anyone who does get seriously injured from this, but I do think that you can't take one unfortunate example. And I'm not, like I say, I'm not double 
Uh, I'm not questioning this guy's experience for a second. I believe he's telling you know it's that is accurate to his situation. But it's not the case for the majority of people that take part in this. The majority of people who do UWCB will not have any serious injuries afterwards. And to me, that has to be the governing principle. If this was a situation that a huge number of people were getting seriously injured, I could definitely see a call for banning it. But that's not the case. And I think to portray the organisers as just reckless cowboys is not fair. Um, I think there can be improvements made to it. With the training, I think there's too many people involved in a small space. Maybe they should work that where they have sort of divide it into two sets or something, I don't know, or just maybe lower the intake. So for example, in our event, there was 30 people. Maybe they should lower that a little bit to say 18 people, something like that. And that way there's more space in the uh, training facilities. Um, that's definitely something that needs to improve. I would say uh, maybe doctors ringside, but I don't think any doctor would agree to it. Um, but my own experience, I can only say what I experienced. And in my experience, I genuinely felt that um, they did care. Um, I don't think they were reckless. I think there's things that can improve. But I honestly don't feel when I took part that they were taking it lightly in any way, shape or form. There's things that can improve. Uh, I mean, any organisation, any event organisers of any kind, need to always look at ways it can improve. It would be the same if someone was organising music venues, uh, music concerts, you know, where they're dealing with big crowds, there's crowd safety issues. It's the same with any big event. Um, with UWCB, they're in the business of organising boxing matches. They're not illegal, but they're not sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control. Um, I mean, I wouldn't have done it if it was illegal. But it's not sanctioned, and that is an aspect that's a little bit, I guess some people would say is a bit dodgy. I would also say that, you know, if you're in your late 20s, 30s, 40s, it's all very well saying let's go to, you know, just get into a gym and be a professional boxer. But if you really, really want this experience in this in, in life and you want to work hard for it, with that avenue, you, you're going to be waiting a lot longer. With UWCB, the training period's a lot shorter, but I wouldn't say it's lax. So basically you're getting the opportunity, but they're not, I don't think they're taking shortcuts. It's just more intense over a short period of time. It would be like, I'll make this analogy. Let's say you have a 500 page book. If you read that over one year versus you read it over one month, you're still reading the same book. I would make that analogy with UWCB. And I'm not saying it's exactly the same as the training with professional boxing. Well, it's certainly not professional boxing, but as amateur boxing, amateur boxing is probably more comprehensive overall. But I really, really don't think it would be fair to portray UWCP as cavalier. I don't believe that's the case. Just my experience, and other people may have had a different experience. I particularly want to hear from people who've done this. Um, what was your experience? Do you feel that anything can improve? I personally feel that's the perhaps the main thing that can improve. I also feel with the, I mentioned this in the previous video, with, with the cancer research fundraising, it's great, it's a good cause, but it's a little bit distracting and sometimes they use techniques like if you don't get so many people signed up, you can't take part. It's a little bit, you know, um, distracting because you're focusing on training and constantly having to meet those targets. I personally think they only done it to kind of motivate you to get people signed up, A, to come to their event, B, to raise money for a good cause. Um, so I would say to anyone taking part in this, don't underestimate that side. I mean, you may know 20 friends that will sign up or family members, but it can be a bit of a distraction. I actually find that in some ways harder than the training itself. The training's intense. And it's military style. You know, they bark orders at you. It's tough going. It really is. 
but that aspect of having to like get people signed up and and following them up for money and so on it's it's a little bit of a distraction and you know i don't fault it it's for a good cause but just be aware of that you know because it could be a little bit stressful thinking oh am i going to meet the threshold what if i don't get 20 people signed up will i be able to take part and that adds extra stress that my that i personally could have done without that's one aspect i didn't particularly like stress from the fundraising you know i i don't begrudge the charity aspect that's great but I wouldn't say I enjoyed it, if I'm being totally honest. I didn't enjoy that aspect of it at all. I I support the principle of it, just not some of the way it was done, like, you know, get this many people signed up or you won't take part. It's a little bit manipulative. I didn't like that. Other than that, I would say, um, yeah, I felt that they were professional and they did care. Just my experience. Let me know your thoughts and your experience.